becoming increasingly common. According to National Registration Department shows, 9,691 divorces filed among non-Muslim couples since 2014 until 2019. In this video, I'm going to discuss about the recent amendment to the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act 1976, which is also known as Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Amendment Act 2017. According to Section 3, this section only applicable to all people residing in Malaysia and everyone domiciled in Malaysia but are residing outside Malaysia. However, this act does not apply to Muslim. This act also does not apply to natives of Sabah or Sarawak whose marriage or divorce which is governed by native customary law unless they elect to marry under this act or he undergoes a Christian marriage under the Christian Marriages Ordinance of Sabah or Church and Civil Marriage Ordinance of Sabah. Firstly, I will discuss the amendment of Section 12. Secondly, the amendment under Section 51. Thirdly, the new section of Section 51A. Fourthly, the amendments on Section 76 and Section 95. Lastly, I will conclude whether the amendments are a positive indication of changes in the Malaysian legal context. Professor Datuk Noor Aziz Muhammad Awa and Muhammad A. Adif Samuri stated around 15,000 girls who were married before the age of 15 in 2010. Also, United Nations Population Fund in 2014 reported there were 50,000 Malaysian girls who were married before the age of 19. Also, there were around 10,240 child marriage applicable between 2005 and 2015. First and foremost, before the amendments of Section 12 of the Law Reform and Marriage and Divorce Act 1976, a person who had yet to attend the age of 21 but wishes to marry is required to obtain the consent in writing as provided under Section 12, Subsection 1. The consent only restricted to one of the person's father or adoptive father. Consent from the person's mother or adoptive mother will only be accepted if the person is an illegitimate child or the father or adoptive father is dead. This section has caused great inconvenience to any individual whose father has left the matrimonial home and could not be found. Under the amendment, under subsection 1 stated, a person who has not completed his or her 21 year shall not be sending that he or she shall have attained the age of majority as prescribed by the Act of Majority Act 1971. Nevertheless, be required before marriage, marrying to obtain the consent in writing under subsection A of his or her father or mother. The amendment in paragraph subsection A by inserting after the word her father, the words or mother. Subsection B, if the person is legitimate of his or her mother, the amendment in paragraph subsection B by deleting the word or his or her father is added and substituting paragraph subsection C, if the person is about the child, or his or her adopted father or adopted mother. This amendment is a positive indication of changes in the Malaysian legal context as it alleviates the hardship of any individual whose father has left the matrimonial home and could not be found which stated by Dr. C. David Tambabilai in a study on the Amendment Bill 2017. Now, Allow mother have the same right to give consent to the marriage of any individual below the age of 21. Hence, the amendment on this section brings great convenience to any individual who want to marry by getting consent from either father or mother. On the other hand, Section 51 of the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act 1976 provided the dissolution ground of conversion to Islam. Before the amendments of Section 51, no petition shall be presented by a non-convert spouse within three months from the date of conversion. For example, in the case of Petli and Majlis Agama Islam Pulau Minang and Tanada, it was held that a non-Muslim marriage is not broken down upon one of the spouses converting to Islam under Section 51. So, it is only the non-convert spouse can apply for divorce at on the ground of breakdown of marriage within the three months from the day of conversion. If not, 
the civil marriage will valid until the non common spouse die, as stated in Subhasini Anapalapan Raja Singram and Savanathan Anapalaki Tangadore and two other appeals. Also, in the case of Iwari Wisla Ringam and Government of Malaysia, the husband who had converted to Islam was not able to divorce his wife from whom he had separated for about six years before his death due to his wife did not take step to dissolve the marriage. After the amendment, Section 51 allows either party to petition for divorce in civil courts and to enable the party to settle disputes on maintenance, matrimonial assets and child custody at any time. In addition, both parties may jointly petition for divorce under Section 52, but the requirement of the two years period does not apply to a divorce when one party has converted to Islam according to Section 51, Subsection 3. Therefore, this amendment emphasizes the positive indication of changes in the Malaysian legal context as it gives equal right to the convert spouse and non convert spouse to file the petition of a divorce or may divorce for mutual consent as stated by Baharuddin Abu Bakar in the Journal of One Spouse Conversion to Islam, the right entity of the convert Muslim spouse to divorce his or her non convert spouse. Thirdly, the new section of Section 51A of Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act 1976 allow the surviving spouse of the deceased, surviving child of the marriage and parents of the deceased converted spouse to apply for distribution for the civil court of the marital assets of the person who converted to Islam but died before the non-Muslim marriage of which the person is a party has been dissolved. Prior to this amendment, if a spouse converts to Islam, the non-converted spouse and other non-Muslim family member were not able to inherit from the converted spouse unless the converted spouse has specifically bequeathed some of his assets to the non-Muslim family members. Kwek Chin Ying and Te Eng Siang in the journal entitled Religious Conversion and the Conflict Between Silver and Islamic Law of Inheritance in Malaysia stated that religion being a bar to the inheritance of the estate of the deceased Muslim was recognized. This showed in the case of FMX and Bag Magari Mohi Hiko Hayashito's Ida Binti Aka State of Bahang. It was held that the deceased mother and brother who were non-Muslim were excluded from the estate of a Muslim. In Madris Agam Islam, Wilayah Persekutuan against Lim Yi Sing and Sabtu Lagi, which cited Ri Ratima Binti Abdullah and Sa Justice Sarif held that non-Muslim was forbidden from inheriting the estate of a Muslim. Moreover, there are conflicts between Muslim and non-Muslim heroes as stated in Kaliyama Anak Perempuan Sina Sami and Jabi. The dispute arose due to the non-Muslim relative claim right at civil courts and the Islamic Religious Council authority filed the cases at the Sharia courts. Although Article 1211A of the Federal Constitution stated that any matter within the jurisdiction of Sharia courts shall not be encroached by the civil courts. The conflict between the decision of two courts is still unavoidable. The new amendment will at least safeguard the rights of non-Muslim family members in relation to matrimonial assets of converted Muslim. In addition, the amendment solved the issue of inheritance of asset that arises when one party to a marriage converts to Islam, which fundamentally stem from the jurisdictional conflict between silver and Sharia courts. It gives the civil court jurisdiction to distribute the assets among the interest party which the factor set out. For example, expenses paid by a spouse for a beneficiary of the family, the extent of the distribution met by other party who did not acquire the asset to the welfare of family by looking after the home and or caring for the family. The duration of the marriage, the debt contractor for the party benefit and the needs of the child. Therefore, this amendment indicated the positive indication of change in the Malaysian legal context because it protects the legal rights of non-Muslims over the property left by Muslim family members. Other than that, Section 76 of Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act 1976 
intend to grant the court powers to order the distribution of matrimonial assets upon divorce or judicial separation. It has been amended to take into consideration non-financial contribution made by a spouse towards the family. As stated by Christine Thor and Eric Thor in Malaysia, it is common for the breadwinner, typically the husband, to contribute toward the financing of the matrimonial home, whereas the homemaker, typically the wife, is expected to look after the home and spend her time caring for the family. Previously, in deciding the division of matrimonial assets, the court will firstly determine if the matrimonial assets was acquired by the joint effect of both spouses or the sole effect of one of these spouses. If it is acquired by the sole effect of one of these spouses, he or she will receive a greater proportion of the assets pursuant to Section 76, Subsection 4 of the Act. After the amendment, the distinction between assets acquired by the joint effect of spouses and sole effect of the spouse is abolished. In exercising its power to order the division of matrimonial assets, the court will have regard to additional factors such as expenses paid by a spouse for the benefit of the family, the extent of the contribution made by other parties who did not acquire the assets to the welfare of family by looking after home or caring for the family, the duration of the marriage, the debts contractor for the party joint benefit, and the needs of the minor children. For example, in the case of Yap Kim Si and Leong Hui Lin, the party were in the joint ownership of the house. Both parties intend to sell the house. Half the proceed will go to the wife. The wife also claimed the husband's house share, so she need to prove the contribution to acquisition the second half share of the home include role as a wife and a mother, looking after the welfare of the family and the home. It was held that the wife was entitled to the one third of the husband house share. Also, in Li Yu Lan and Lin Tiang Chi, after the court considered the debt that husband had to pay, it was held that the wife is entitled to the one third of the home purchase price due to contribution to the matrimonial home by caring and rearing the children at home and general duty as a housewife. Hence, this amendment is significant to those who decide to leave the workforce to care for the welfare of the family by providing their time and efforts instead of contributing to the family financially. So, the amendment is a positive indication of change in the Malaysian legal context. Before the amendment, there was a dispute on the issue whether physical or mental disability in Section 95 of the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act 1976 covers the financial dependence of a child who is pursuing his or her tertiary education. For example, in the case of Ching Seng Guo and Lin Shok Lin, the court held that the involuntary financial dependence of the child of a man rich for the purpose of furthering his or her study or the higher level come within the exception of physical or mental disability under Section 95. The decision was followed by Karuna Raja Anak Lelaki Rasya and Puno Tambikai Anak Perempuan Ponia. So many children are robbed of the opportunity to complete their tertiary education as they are financially dependent to their divorced parents. Hence, Dr. Sidavi Tambabilai stated that it is hoped the parliament would amend the law or another federal court decision would overrule the decision of Karuna Raja case. Finally, under Section 95, the duration of order for custody and maintenance, it is amended by inserting after the word physical or mental disability or he persuading but further or higher education of training and the words choosing of such disability or completion of such further or higher education or training. According to Dr. Sidavi Tambabilai, this amendment gives a great significance as it affects the entitlement of children beyond the age of 18 years to maintenance upon their parent divorce. This means that a child who is still pursuing higher education or training under custody and payment of maintenance until completion of the program as stated in Section 95. Previously, the law required a father to maintain his child under the child turns 18 age. 
After the amendment, it ensures parents, especially fathers, will have the duty to maintain his child beyond the age of 18 if the child decided to persuade higher education or training as stated by Rahimi Rahim in the civil marriage can only be dissolved in civil court now. For example, as shown in the recent case of Tong Se Yi and Ho Sun Jo and another, the court took cognizance of the amendment which provided for the situation of the child maintenance upon completion of the child higher education or training. Although at the time of the writing of the grounds of judgment, the legal position was that an order for custody or maintenance of the child shall expire on the attainment by the child at the age of 18 years. It was held that the respondent husband to bear the education expenses for the child's first academic degree. The amendment on Section 95 includes higher educational training as one of the exceptions to the provision of maintenance of children above of 18 age. Now, every child in the nation has privilege of receiving education up to tertiary level, regardless of their family background, which indicated the amendment is positive indication of change in Malaysia legal context. Therefore, no child shall be deprived from the opportunity of to receive the education. In conclusion, the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Amendment Act 2017, which came into force on 15 December of 2018, to the last extent, the recent amendments to the Law Reform Marriage and Divorce Act 1976 are a positive indication of change in the Malaysia legal context, which I have been discussed from the above. Because the amendments are progressive as in line with social developments, it gives a great convenience of ten consent from either father or mother when a person wants to marry under 21 age if the father who left the matrimonial home and cannot be found. The equal rights given to the converted spouse and non-converted spouse to file the petition of divorce. Moreover, this gift a fairer recognition is no longer of a lesser value to spouses who contribution to the family which are no monetary in nature but the time and efforts for the welfare of family, also the welfare of children. So, senior family law practitioner Honi Tan said, children and wife were the biggest beneficiary on these amendments. Therefore, the changes are one of the improvements in the Malaysia legal context.